Welcome to today's service. Our reading is a familiar one from John's Gospel and is read by Jamie. And I hope that you've managed to get your hair cut, had a pint outside the pub of course, or enjoyed some retail therapy in some non-essential shops since the last time that we were together. Here's Jamie with our reading. The reading is taken from John chapter 10, verses 11 to 18. I am the Good Shepherd. The Good Shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep. So when he sees a wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. Then the wolf attacks the flock and scatters it. The man runs away because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the Good Shepherd. I know my sheep, and my sheep know me. Just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that are not at this sheep pen. I must bring them also. They too will listen to my voice and there shall be one flock and one shepherd. The reason my father loves me is that I lay down my life, only to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have the authority to lay it down and authority to take it up again. This command I received from my father. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Jesus' words that we heard from John's Gospel have shaped the church's understanding of priesthood for centuries. Priests are called to work as servants and shepherds. That's what it says in the ordinal. That's the service that's used when priests are ordained. Before and since I was ordained, I've thought about what it means to be a good shepherd. Of course, I know nothing about actual shepherding. I'm OK when it's about the metaphor of leaders in the church, when we're talking about the importance of listening to the voice of the Good Shepherd, of knowing the flock and of them knowing you, about the need to know where good pasture is and the skills and character needed so that the sheep will follow you. I can talk about what it might mean to exercise ministry that's life-giving to others and the sort of sacrifices that that may involve. But I would fall into a blind panic if you put me in a field full of actual sheep and asked me to gather them together and lead them into a field. I wouldn't have the first clue what to do. But I do like sheep. We've walked through fields of sheep while on holiday. We've taken our grandchildren to Hall Hill Farm. They love feeding the sheep there and the feet the sheep can get really, really insistent when you don't feed them. Callum particularly loves it when they follow him and run after him. He doesn't realise actually it's his bag of food that they're after. We once visited a farm in North Wales that was really interesting. The farmer was completely amazing. I was blown away by him. I came away thinking it's a hard life and I'd never want to do it, but he had some incredible skills. If a lamb lost its mother, he had a way of tricking another ewe into thinking that it was her lamb. And I'm sure that his sheep knew his voice. My sheep hear my voice, says Jesus. I know them and they follow me. It's an easy metaphor to understand, but a difficult one to put into practice because we have to attune ourselves to the voice of the shepherd. If we want to go the way of our shepherd, Jesus, and know when he's calling us, then the first thing that we need to do is to genuinely listen for his voice to long to know what he wants and not just ask him to bless what we want. I think that we all probably do that more than we realise. If we're to hear well, it needs to matter to us what Jesus wants. If you think of the Pharisees, they were so certain that they knew God and his ways that they couldn't recognise that Jesus was the longed for Messiah. They listened to him speak, but they couldn't hear properly because their preconceptions and their longing for power and control got in the way. 
I can usually tell in my own life when I'm avoiding his voice because I find myself reluctant to pray about a decision or a situation. I know that when I pray about it, I open myself up to God's will rather than to my own. And I confess that I don't always welcome the challenge or the disruption that that can bring. Other times, God can speak so clearly and so loudly that it doesn't matter whether we're listening or not. The voice of the Good Shepherd is heard with such clarity that there's no doubt that it's Christ. This is the sort of situation that Saul found himself in on the road to Damascus or Peter by the shore of Galilee. In these sorts of situations, to hear and respond are all part of the same action. But for most of us, most of the time, even when we're listening really carefully, the voice of the Good Shepherd is not heard so clearly. So we need to distinguish when he speaks and filter out the other voices that crowd his voice out, knowing the different voices and learning who to trust. Sheep won't respond to any old voice or any call. They learn to distinguish the voice of their shepherd, its tone, its inflections, its accent. If someone else, is, else uses the same words to call those sheep, they're likely to be ignored and will be met with blank indifference. The sheep know the voice of the shepherd. But we're not always as skilled as sheep and sometimes find it hard to distinguish the voice of God from all the other voices that surround us. Seductive voices promise unhappiness and wealth if we buy the right things. Ambitious voices promising success and admiration if we'll just work hard enough, achieve a bit more. Political voices conjuring fear and promising security in return for your vote. Voices of doubt that say you're not good enough. We will know probably which voices are the ones that we're most attuned to, which have the capacity to shape us and drive us. But among the cacophony of voices, it can be really hard to hear the voice of the Good Shepherd. It's also easy to get it wrong about what the voice of God is saying to us. I've known lots of people who have believed that God has told them to do something, usually really genuinely, and it's become clear with time that they've been wrong. The Good Shepherd does speak. My sheep hear my voice, he says. But how do we know when we're hearing the voice of the Good Shepherd and not all of the other voices that would love us to do what they're telling us? Well, this is when discernment comes in. There are places where God's voice is reliably heard in the Bible, where we hear and read not only God's own words, but also the faithful witnesses of those who have listened to his voice down the centuries. We hear his voice maybe while taking the sacraments, speaking the words of absolution in confession, of thanksgiving and self-offering in the Eucharist, of love and belonging in baptism. And we hear his voice in prayer. Testing our discernment against scripture and tradition always helps as well. God doesn't contradict himself. And nor as the source of all goodness, does he ask us to do things that aren't good. So we won't find Jesus telling us to have an affair or to engage in gossip or to exploit someone to get what we want. Perhaps those are obvious examples. Although it's a constant source of amazement to me what people can justify to themselves. But there can be more difficult decisions as well. We don't always face situations that are straightforward. Should I marry this person? Should I leave my job? How should I care for my elderly parents? How should we bring up the children? What should I do with my money? We can't just lift a verse out of the Bible to tell us exactly what we to do in all situations. The Bible and the church's teaching can inform what we think and believe about marriage and families and money and work. But how we use that knowledge in our own lives takes discernment, listening for the voice of the shepherd. So if we want to be able to discern the voice of Jesus, we must know him well. We must take time to pray, to read the Bible and to talk to others who know him. And as well as listening for the voice of the shepherd, we listen to ourselves. Does the decision that I need to make bring me peace or turmoil? 
Does it lead us to God or away from him? Does it lead to an increase in faith and hope and love or to anxiety, distress and absence of faith and hope and love? The shepherd whose voice we listen for always wants to draw us to himself, to make us more fully his own. For the sheep, discerning the voice of the shepherd is a matter of life and death. Get it wrong, and you find yourself responding to the hired hand or to the thief. For us as well, discerning the voice of the shepherd is a matter of life and death. To hear and respond to his voice is to live in the abundant life that he promises. To ignore it shuts us off from the life and love that we are made for. My sheep hear my voice, says Jesus. I know them and they follow me. The sheep follow because they are known, because the shepherd is trustworthy. Even when we get it wrong, when we listen to the wrong voices or fear to discern the voice of the shepherd, he will come and find us and call us home. Nothing can snatch us out of his hands. And I think that that's the most amazing truth. And it gives me peace and hope. And I hope that you hear the shepherd's voice and that he brings you home and you find peace and hope in his voice. Amen. Lord, we thank you that you are our good shepherd and we ask that you would help us to discern your voice above all the voices that are crowding in us. Help us to read your word faithfully and hear your voice speaking to us through it. We know that you call us by name, Lord, and as you do, help us through your spirit to follow you and let you lead us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.